A History of Names What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. As Romeo pondered the significance of the moniker of his beloved, we have to admit names are something we take for granted, but they are a huge part of human culture. Expectant parents may agonize about what to call their new bundle of joy, something hip and trendy like Emma, Liam, Olivia, or Noah, something creative and unique like Apple, Absidy, Rumi, or Sir, or an old classic or family name like Mary, George, Elizabeth, or Robert. Someone's name is often their first impression. Multiple studies have shown that your name affects how people perceive everything from your intelligence and personality to how you look. But no pressure on picking that perfect name for Junior to use for the rest of his or her life. Let's take a look at the history of the given name, where they come from, where they are coming from now, and some interesting naming traditions from around the world. When did we start using names? As spoken history doesn't survive nearly as well as physical artifacts, tracing the development of the name is rather tricky. But names for individual people likely evolved right along with spoken language. As it helped early humans to navigate their environment to assign words to animals, plants, and places, like, I killed a wildebeest by the lake, let's go bring it back to the village and eat it, or the red berries are delicious, the thorn berries will kill you. It was also much easier to say, Tuk Tuk is the father of my child, or I went hunting with Ugg and he got eaten by a saber-toothed tiger. As written language emerged, we begin to see more solid proof of names for individuals. This hieroglyphic of a falcon above a mouth is found in many artifacts from the 32nd century BC. It is pronounced Iri Hor and is believed to be the name of an early pharaoh of Egypt, but could also mean something else related to the royal family. A clay tablet dating to the same era was discovered in Sumeria, which is interpreted to say 29,086 measures of barley were received over the course of 37 months, signed Cushum. So the ancient accountant named Cushum may be one of the earliest recorded names in history, but could also be a job title or company name. Another Mesopotamian tablet from a few generations later tell of two enslaved people named Inpap X and Sukigir who were owned by Gal Sal. These three people were the holders of some of the definitive earliest names ever recorded. Names became very important and powerful to ancients in the Fertile Crescent. Speaking the name of a deity was believed to evoke their spirit for magic or miracles, and rituals had to be carried out in someone's name. This belief is responsible for the reluctance to use the proper name of God in Hebrew writing or speech. In the New Testament, Luke 9.49, the disciples record seeing a man driving out demons using the name of Jesus Christ. In Catholic exorcism, a demon can be expelled when the exorcist has forced it to tell its name. Throughout the Bible, people are given names that have meaning and significance. For instance, Solomon was the first king to reign without war, and his name means peace. Where do names come from? Names come from a variety of sources across different cultures. They derive from nouns such as the Gaelic name Conan meaning hound, or the Latin name Ava meaning bird, from adjectives such as the English William meaning strong-willed, or the Greek Sophia meaning wise. They come from compounds of ancient phrases like the Hebrew Benjamin meaning son of my right hand, or the Norse Oliver meaning ancestor's descendant. Gods and deities are also popular inspiration for names such as the Greek goddess Diana or the Norse god Thor. As these names became popular in a given culture, their original meanings were often forgotten and they simply became part of the pool of common names in the area. In medieval Europe, the deeply religious population tended to stick with biblical and saints' names. The first name was often called the Christian name, and a name day or a saint's day, the feast day of the saint you were named after, was more commonly celebrated than one's birthday. You might also be named after a saint whose feast day you were born on. 
As Catholic saints came from a variety of cultures, names became a form of cultural exchange, but the original meanings were further obscured. Saint Catherine was an Egyptian martyr of Greek origin from the third century. Her name means pure. Saint Nicholas was living at the same time in Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey, and his name means victory of the people. Both Catherine and Nicholas were popular names throughout the Middle Ages, but their spelling and pronunciation were adapted to fit the local language. Catherine is Catalina in Spanish, and Nicholas is Nikolai in Russian. Naming Traditions from Around the World In Ghana, children are often named based on the day of the week they were born. Each day has assigned male and female names. So a baby boy born at 11.59 on a Thursday would be called Yao, but if he waited to be born until 12.01 on Friday morning, his name would be Kofi. A girl born on a Saturday is named Ama, and one born on Tuesday is Abina. Ghana's first president, Kwame Nkrumah, was born on a Saturday, and former United Nations Secretary General, Kofi Annan, was born on a Friday. The day on which you were born is believed to be tied to your character. Weekday names are common in West Africa and the African diaspora. In Ghana, second names are added in the case of siblings who share the same day of birth, or in the case of twins, the second sibling delivered is considered the elder, as they were mature enough to help their sibling out first. So a twin girl delivered second on a Tuesday would be called Abina Ata Kuma. In China, given names are nearly always one or two syllables, with single-syllable names being more traditional and two-syllable names gaining in popularity. A name is selected based on the tonal quality of the sound and the shape of the character or characters that make up the written name. The meaning of the name is also significant, with strong masculine names like Cha Wei meaning great, and Lai Kuayong meaning strong, popular for boys, while feminine, beautiful names like Lai Na meaning elegant, or Chong Lai meaning beautiful, popular for girls. Across cultures, the names that parents choose for their children reflect their hopes and dreams for their offspring's future, as well as their cultural values. Given names can have big ties to one's cultural heritage, and many people look back on their origins when picking names for their children. In the 1960s and 70s, many African Americans decided to forego traditional white names and give their children names that reflected their origins in Africa. The popular miniseries Roots caused the name Kizzy to soar in popularity. Many other names were borrowed or adapted from African names, such as Imani, which comes from Swahili and means faith, or Jamal, a masculine name from Arabic meaning beauty. Kalisha is a combination of the common West African prefix Ka and the popular American name Alicia, and Rashan is a combination of the Arabic prefix Ra and the Irish name Sean. Other popular names in the African-American community include those with French prefixes such as DeMarcus and Lawanda. This harkens to the mingling of the large French-speaking and African-American populations of Louisiana. Societies in the past were far more communal than our modern culture, so names that fit in were more valuable than unique or unusual names. Henry VIII married two Annes and three Catherines, and several of his mistresses also shared those names. I'm sure that helped him when calling their names in bed. As individualism became more important, parents have prioritized selecting more unusual monikers for their children that will set them apart from their peers. More and more, parents aim to find a name that no other child in their preschool will have. Celebrities have been at the forefront of this trend with names like Apple, Radix, Blue Ivy, and even Moxie Crime Fighter. The popularity of given names is forever waxing and waning. Speakeasies in the 1920s were full of Georges and Ruths, while many Roberts and Dorothys fought and nursed in World War II. A great deal of Richards and Barbaras were trying out the hippie lifestyle at Woodstock, and Michaels and Lisas were moonwalking in the 1980s. And parents today, like Matthew and Jessica, are filling up preschools with Little Masons and Emmas. What about middle names? Why do so many of us get two given names? 
Middle names first appeared in the 11th century in the Gascony region of France and in the 13th century among Italian elites. As we now know, children were often given the names of Catholic saints, and it was believed that a saint would offer some protection to the mortals who bear their moniker. So in a time of high childhood mortality, why wouldn't you grant your baby additional protection by naming them after more than one saint? Middle names also had a practical purpose. There might be three John Smiths living in your village. Middle names help distinguish between John Michael Smith, John Peter Smith, and John Zachariah Smith. This really came into play with the 11 daughters of Holy Roman Empress Maria Theresa, all of whom were given the first name Maria after their mother and the Virgin Mary. But rather than saying, Maria, can you get your sisters Maria and Maria? They were referred to by their unique middle names, such as Anna, Josefa, and Antonia, aka Marie Antoinette. Sadly, three of Maria Theresa's daughters died in early childhood, and their names were recycled to younger daughters. She had two Maria Elizabeths and three Maria Carolinas. If you're interested in learning more about Maria Theresa's 16 fascinating children, check out my videos about them. By the 18th and 19th centuries, Europeans and North Americans from all social classes were giving children a second name. In the mid-20th century, the use of substituting initials for middle or first names enjoyed a few decades of popularity. Examples include writer F. Scott Fitzgerald and J.R.R. Tolkien, and nine U.S. presidents including Franklin D. Roosevelt and John F. Kennedy. Today, middle names are common across the world and many people use them as a way to honor family members without making it the child's day-to-day -day name. So you can remember your Grandma Bertha and your Uncle Herbert in a more discreet way. Many cultures use middle names as an additional family name, such as the Spanish custom of using one's mother's maiden name or the Russian use of the father's first name. I will discuss this further in next week's video on the history of family names. What does your name mean? Any special stories behind it? Let me know in the comments. A special thank you goes to my patron, Anissa Dehamna. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and check out my other royal history videos. If you really want to help, please consider supporting me on Patreon. A link is in the description. Thank you for watching.